I'm Mark Penfold. Welcome to the Audio Bible Lover YouTube channel. Today is episode one. I'm starting this YouTube channel as a way to keep folks informed about my future audio Bible projects using public domain Bible texts. For more information on public domain and what it uh, is all about, Google public domain law in the United States. Anyway, today is June 25th, 2018, and after 10 long years, more than 10 years, actually, I finally completed the Old Testament of the Literal Translation of the Bible by Robert Young, also known as the Young's Literal Translation, or YLT. It is a very literal, literal translation uh, written in, uh, I should say, translated in the mid-19th century. Uh, Robert Young also published the Young's Concordance, uh, and uh, the edition I used was the third edition from 1898. Very, very literal. Uh, in some places, almost impossible for modern readers to understand. Uh, today, we would probably consider it somewhat antiquated, archaic language, maybe. But it is uh, very literal, word-for-word -word translation in mid-19th century English with thee, thou, thine, and all the other stuff that seems to bother today's Bible readers. Um, I think it's beautiful and majestic the way those uh, terms were used. And I, I think like in the King James Version and in other uh, versions like that uh, that do not necessarily use modern English uh, I think they're the most eloquent. I think they are. They capture the biblical text most accurately and most closely. So with that in mind, right now I'm working on the uh, New Testament in modern speech, translated by a gentleman named Richard Francis Weymouth, also in the mid-19th century, mid to late 19th century, I should say. And... Uh, the structure, the word structure and language used is a lot easier to understand than the Young's literal, but it is still a very literal translation, uh, very accurate. And um, so right now I have just finished recording the book of Ephesians, uh, now time for editing and submission. I have been involved with a website community known as LibriVox for a little over 10 years now. Actually, the first book of the Young's Literal Translation I recorded was the book of Daniel. That was actually my first recording project for LibriVox. And uh, it sounds horrible. <laughs> the sound quality is just awful compared to the uh, audio submissions that I've made lately. So uh, it's been kind of a trial and error thing with me as far as microphones and recording equipment goes, but I think I've got some pretty good equipment now. So you might be wondering, why am I so interested in public domain versions of scripture? Well, because today the two main Bible versions in the public domain here in the United States that are recorded on a frequent basis are the King James Version, which is public domain here in the United States, but is not in the United Kingdom, and a public domain version known as the World English Bible, or the Web Bible, which is a modern uh, retooling, if you will, of the American Standard Version, or ASV. And, uh, you know, I was just like, wait a minute. There have to be other versions out there. There have to be. There just have to be. So I went searching and searching, and one day I came upon this website known as the Bible Lovers Museum. Or, no, I'm sorry. The Bible Readers Museum. And uh, 
there's a ton of material on there, a ton of uh, clearly public domain texts. And uh, so I was, it was like a kid in a candy store. I uh, scrolled down the list, and uh, that is where you can find a lot of these non-copyrighted Bible texts. You do have to be careful that you, you really concentrate on the date uh, the publishing date, and make sure that the edition from which you are recording is public domain. Uh, actually, if you talk to the people on the LibriVox site, uh, lots of very knowledgeable people on there who will answer your questions concerning that. So, um, yeah, my my intention was, you know, there have to be more texts out there than just the King James and the World English Bible. And you'd be surprised how many public domain audio, uh, public domain Bible texts there are out there. And so it's a matter of just looking, a matter of just taking the time doing your research and finding those texts, and you will find a lot of them out there. And some of them are online only. So, um, yeah, there's actually one called the Catholic Public Domain Version, the CPVD. Did I say that right? Yeah, whatever. Uh, the Catholic Public Domain Version by a gentleman named Richard Conte, I think. I don't really remember his name. But, um, yeah, you can find a lot out there. And, and uh, be sure to look for a statement on those particular sites saying this was put in the public domain on such and such a date, or uh, was, yeah, well, or or similar uh, statements like that. So uh, it's been a it's it's been a ride recording the Young's literal translation. I've got the New Testament to go yet, and uh, I'm going to take a different approach to the New Testament than I that I did with the Old Testament. The Old Testament was very dramatic. It was a very dramatic reading. I, I created a lot of voices, uh, but this time I will limit the voices, the, the voice readings, the, the uh, distinct characters, and, and just read it as an expressive reading. Uh, it's not going to be a dry academic reading, but uh, it also will not be an overly dramatic reading using different voices. Um, that, <clears throat> that can hurt the throat after a while, <laughs> uh, especially now that I am recording Paul's letters and, you know, I kind of use a, a very husky voice like that. Uh, I do think different voices brings uh, a degree of listenability. Is that even a word? <laughs> uh, Okay, let me say that in a different way. There are some versions out there that sound like gibberish to the modern listener, or they sound so archaic that listening to them can sometimes be uh, quite the challenge. So the reason I uh, made the Old Testament chapters and books I recorded them as dramatic readings is so that people would probably more readily listen to those uh, because, you know, kind of an academic reading like this, you know, where you're just reading from the page and you're not really putting any real emotion into it, that can turn a lot of people off and not make them want to listen. So uh, I added voices to Old Testament characters, like, for example, the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Uh, you know, Elijah was kind of like the Apostle Paul. And Elijah, Elisha was, uh, you know, I, I, I rendered like so. Um, and a lot of that you might find humorous. I could have found it humorous myself. But uh, it was definitely a great experience. And um, so anyway, I just wanted to make this episode one to let you know that uh, about my present and future projects. I don't really know which future projects I'll do yet, but I am currently uh, 
going to begin the process of recording the Young's Literal Translation New Testament. And uh, I'm still continuing on my way through the uh, what, what's, what are known as the Pauline letters in the, uh, in the New Testament in Modern Speech, uh, the Richard Francis Weymouth translation. So anyhow, I know this wasn't a flawless video. Um, I'll try working on them and then making them a little less bumpy in the future. But, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> So anyway, uh, my name is Mark Penfold, and thank you for watching this introductory video, and uh, I will see you in episode two. God bless. Thanks.